Hi everybody, I'm Jeremiah, and in this video we're going to talk about search fundamentals. It's often the case that when we're trying to solve a problem, we can break up the potential solutions to that problem into a finite, discrete series of steps or actions. And some of these are what we call well-defined problems. A well-defined problem has a few particular requirements and features. The first is, all well-defined problems have an initial state. The initial state doesn't necessarily have to be the same every time, but there has to be some kind of starting point. For example, in a game of chess, it's the arrangement of the pieces when the game begins. We also need to have a set of one or more goal states, and these are the problem states when we have reached the solution to the problem. If we go back to our chess example, the goal states include all checkmate and stalemate board configurations. In a path planner, the goal state would be the destination, the location we're trying to get to. A well-defined problem also has what we call a state space, and this is the state of all reachable states from the starting point, from that initial state. So in a path planner, the state space includes all of the locations we can get to from the starting point. In a game of chess, it's all the valid board configurations we can get to, the arrangements of pieces we can get to, by moving pieces around on the board by legal moves. Finally, we have to have one, and often more than one, operators. And an operator is how we get from one problem state to another problem state. By applying an operator, we move through the state space. In a game of chess, the operators are moves that we make with pieces. And in a path planner, they're steps we take in some direction. And it's important to note that the number of operators is finite. There are only just so many of them. There are not an unlimited number. We can step in only so many directions in a path planner if that problem is a well-defined problem. If we can determine that a problem is a well-defined problem, then we can tackle that problem using search algorithms. So let's take a look at an example. This is a sliding puzzle, and in particular it's the 8 puzzle variant. And you probably got something like this in a birthday bag when you were a kid. We slide the tiles around to rearrange them into some desired order. In this particular example, we're trying to get the numbers in order. If you got one of these in a goodie bag when you were a kid, you were probably trying to arrange some picture. But the idea is the same. We move the tiles around one at a time until we get the arrangement that we're looking for. So in this particular example, we have two options at the start. We could move the 8 over, or we could move the 7 down. If we choose to move the 7 down, we then have three options from there. We could move the 1 over, we could move the 3 down, or we could move the 7 up, and so on and so forth. This is how a search unfolds in a tree formation. But there are problems with the naive version of this approach to search. Consider this. If we take 10 steps, if we move 10 tiles around, if we go to a depth of 10 or 10 ply on the tree, that will take us to about 4 to the 10 nodes, because there are 4 potential steps at each location, that's the branching factor of the problem, which puts us at somewhere around a million nodes. Now that's not too bad, with modern hardware that seems doable. But it's not uncommon for these types of problems to go to a depth of, say, 55, to have a 55-ply tree in order to solve this problem. And that is closer to 1.5 times 10 to the 25 nodes. As a comparison point, the weight of the entire Earth is around 1.3 times 10 to the 25 pounds. So, this is a pretty huge number. It's enormous. What's funny is, if we look at the possible number of board configurations on this 8-puzzle problem, there's only around 363,000 possibilities. So why are we running into so many more nodes than possible board configurations? The problem we're running into is one of duplicates. It's very easy for us to run into a problem state than we've already been to. Now this particular example is the easy one. We move the 7 down, and we move the 7 up. This is called the toggle. And you might think, well that's stupid, and you would be right, because computers are stupid. Computers are not intelligent entities. They aren't thoughtful. Every bit of intelligence that they have, we have to build into them. And as a result, they fall to a lot of very simple problems that we might never even imagine an intelligent entity falling to. Now, the toggle is not the only way we can get duplicates. We can also get duplicates by taking totally different sets of actions, even if we start from the same point. For example, let's say that we all decided to go to the arcade. We all might start in the classroom. I might go to my office and do some work. You might go home and do some homework or play some games. And then we might meet at the arcade afterwards. We took totally different paths. We took totally different actions but we started in the same place, and we ended in the same place. 
And this is very common, not just in path planners, but in all types of well-defined problems that we might use search to attack. When we can eliminate duplicates, we drastically reduce the amount of memory and processing time needed to solve the problem. We go from 1.52 times 10 to the 25 to 3.62 times 10 to the 5. That's 20 orders of magnitude. That alone is a huge difference.